Hi everyone, welcome to Mixed Media Double Take with Rebecca Lockhart and Kiki Halbert. I'm Kiki, thanks for joining us today. I'm going to have Rebecca's um, link down in the uh, bottom description box. This is the layout that we're scrap lifting today. And the Mixed Media Double Take is a new collaboration with Rebecca and I. And what we do is we scrap lift a layout and um, we each use mixed media, but two different kinds. Um, so I'm using some gelatos, which you see on the right hand side, which are wax uh, crayons that are water soluble. And I'm also going to be using some texture paste through a stencil. And so um, make sure that you watch Rebecca's uh, channel as well to see how she does this scrap lift with two different kinds of mixed media. It's going to be a lot of fun and I hope you really enjoy it. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please consider doing so so that you can be on top of all my future videos and uh, click the notification bell so that you get alerted and you don't miss any of them. So what I've done so far is I have taken some a piece of white daisy cardstock from close to my heart and I have gessoed it. Um, so there was clear gesso put down and dried and then I actually took the crayon and drew on the um, paper itself and where there was the gesso and uh, mixed it with water and so I've got some uh, light uh, watercolor effect um, on the paper now. Sorry for the overexposure. I don't know what was happening with my camera yesterday. Um, I didn't want to toss out this video for you though because I think you can still learn quite a few really cool tips. Um, I'm going to be covering things like what kinds of glues to use when you're using mixed media, um, what kind of glues that I recommend for using with mixed media and for really good adhesion. Um, I'm also going to be showing you a tip on how to get the most out of your gelatos rather than just using them like watercolor um, and how you can use them in conjunction with texture paste. So I hope that you'll stay tuned for the rest of the video and enjoy it. Uh, right now what I'm doing is I'm taking a Prima stencil, it's a quatrefoil design, and I'm putting a little bit of light modeling paste um, down. I, I do enjoy working with the light modeling paste from Liquitex, so if you're looking for that, um, that's one that I recommend. But Golden also has a very good modeling paste. Um, and so a little of this goes a long way. You can either put it through a stencil fairly thickly um, so that you get a lot of dimension, or you can do it like I'm doing, which is doing just a little bit and um, of the texture paste and I'm doing a thin coat of it. Uh, for putting it through the stencil, I'm just using an old gift card. You don't need to have any um, expensive tools to do that. Um, so I wanted to show you that, um, you know, the, the old gift card works really well. And so there's the effect that I have. I turned off the light for a moment just to try to give you a better look at it. Um, and so you've seen, you see that I've got texture piece around the page. I don't have it in the center. I only have parts of it around. Um, because I don't want to waste the texture paste underneath the picture because you're not going to see it there. And um, I'm using some embellishments from a hip kit club. I believe Rebecca's using the exact same hip kit club. Uh, sorry for the noise in the background. There's like a lot of traffic going on. Um, so I'm going to be using some die cuts. I'm going to be using their stickers. Um, there are also some really cute um, banners that are from Paige Evans from the Wonders Collection. And then also um, some really neat, um, these are, oh, what do they call them? They're like a raised frame with an acetate um, and there's some flowers printed on it. So I've got a variety of embellishments I'm gonna do. Now here's one of the tips for the gelatos. So if you've put texture paste down, on top of watercolor or color and then you want to just color the texture paste differently. What you can do is like I'm doing I'm rubbing my finger onto the gelato directly and then I'm just lightly dusting the texture paste. What that does is that that texture paste then picks up the color especially around the edges which gives you a really nice dimensional effect um, but it doesn't go through to the paper. Um, so if you put on the texture paste fairly thickly. Um, it takes a while to dry, but you can do it. You can do the, the crayon directly to the texture paste that way, but I put it on thin. And so what I'm doing is just dusting my finger with the um, gelatos 
over certain sections of the texture paste so that it doesn't go through to the paper. It, I'm just basically rubbing lightly on top of the texture paste and it's going to add another pop of color there. So I've used three different colors. I've used like an aqua color, a metallic coral, and then now I'm putting on the bubble gum. And that's just going to give it an extra pop. Um, so it's a way to really um, to add not only sort of a watercolor effect to the paper underneath, but then also change the color of your texture paste um, just a little bit without mixing in the texture paste with the gelato. That's another way that you can color your texture paste, but I didn't want the texture paste entirely blue. I wanted it white with some, some dimension. So you're going to see in the close-ups later um, just exactly how that looks um, versus coloring texture paste. So what I'm doing now is I'm putting down my um, picture and I'm using foam tape for this. I really recommend that if you are using texture paste, you use some kind of foam tape or some um, mixed media designed uh, glue. Uh, one that I'm using today is Helmar 450 Quick Dry Adhesive. It's kind of like a gel type of a glue. And the reason I recommend using that kind of glue when you've got texture paste on the page is because it will um, it's much more sticky um, it's not a, a very wet glue at all and it will adhere to all the parts of your uh, texture paste and your paper so here's those uh, gold um, frames and they're really pretty they've got like sort of this almost it's almost gives you this feeling of like pressed flowers under glass um, you could, because these have foam all the way around them inside, you could use them for a, sh you know, as a shaker. Um, I, so I could have put some uh, some sequins underneath there, but I didn't want to do that this time around. I might do that in the future, so keep your eye out for that. But right now, what I'm doing is I'm just playing around with these die cuts that come from the kit and figuring out how I want to um, put them around the page. Uh, the layout that I was playing with had two smaller photos that had two three by fours and so what I did is I used a four by six photo so I'm changing up the design a little bit um, but there was a lot of clustering off on the left hand side um, she had a lot of flowers so I'm sticking with a lot of flowers but I do like quite a few of the little die cuts that came with the kit and then here are the um, so these are the dimensional banners that came out that are from the Wonders Collection from Paige Evans. And they're really cute. I don't usually go for a banners. I don't, I'm not one to really use them much. I used to, but, um, but these are super cute. So um, I'm going to use them in various places. There are some larger ones and some small ones. I'm going to use the larger one for my title that says Wonderful. And um, so you're, you'll see that I'm just kind of trying to move um, the... Um, banners around the page to kind of create like a virtual um, a visual triangle um, so I'm gonna they're not gonna necessarily stay where you see everything right now I am gonna kind of fiddle with them now I'm going to actually take some of the um, stickers and rather than going ahead and uh, doing my normal thing some of them I'm, I am going to use like a die cut with my anti-static pouch like you see right there um, the bird is just so whimsical so I had to use them um, or her, I'm not sure. So some of the larger embellishments that are stickers, um, I am going to create like die cuts so I can move them around and figure out exactly how I'm going to do my clusters first. And then some of the smaller pictures, I'm at, or smaller stickers, I should say, I'm going to actually just stick directly to the page. Um, the stickers that I use just as is are not going to go on top of texture paste, otherwise they wouldn't really stick um, permanently. So I'm just going to play around with some of the uh, embellishment um, clusters here. Um, I'm, I don't have a ton of pictures of recent pictures this year, um, of course because of the pandemic. Uh, my husband and I really haven't done a lot of trips um, or, or outings um, and I think I'm going to have to start taking some pictures, uh, sorry if you hear my dog in the background there, I think I'm going to start taking some pictures of my husband and I, just everyday pictures and scrapbooking those because that's the kind of year that it was. Um, I've been working from home a little over a year, year and a, a year and three months, so I really haven't got any outings uh, pictures. Uh, but I'm looking forward to a time when I can start doing that again, and I think everybody is. Um, so, 
hopefully this year is uh, is going to end up um, in a very good way for all of us. Um, have you have you been going out? Have you been doing anything recently? I know a lot of places in the United States have opened up, um, which is great because of um, the vaccines in Canada starting to slowly open. Um, we're not quite open here in BC, but we're getting there. Sorry for the bus noise again. Um, I've got the window open because boy has it been a scorcher here in BC this week. Um, they say that the temperature is actually going to feel like body temperature today, 97 degrees. Um, maybe not today, maybe maybe that's tomorrow, but it's just going to keep getting hotter until next week, which is just crazy. And I know that ar around the country, um, it's been pretty bad for most people. So have you been staying cool? Have you been, uh, have you got, a, got yourself a pool or something? Uh, that's the only thing I miss from um, back in Ottawa is my mom used to have a pool. I used to be able to go in swimming. Um, and we used to go to some river beaches, but it's funny, we've, um, we haven't we have gone swimming here since we got here in BC. Not really, anyhow. Um, so I think we're going to have to start visiting some beaches, um, some swimming beaches. Not so much for sun tanning and partying, but just to stay cool. Um, so we might do that. We'll see. Maybe do a lazy river or something. That would be kind of fun. Have you done those before? Um, I'd love to see some pictures if you have. They're, they're kind of fun. So... I've just um, moved around most of my embellishments and I'm now putting them down. You'll see that Helmar quick dry adhesive. I really recommend that. It's clear, it comes in a bottle. Another brand that you can find is Fabri-Tac. That's also a terrific um, glue I recommend. And if you can't find that, look for Beacon 3-in-1. Uh, very, very good glues for working with scrapbooking and mixed media. They don't um, they don't soak your paper. You know if you've watched my videos that I'm a big fan of the Scotch quick um, tacky quick drying glue or um, it might have been called you might have a bottle of it it's called Scotch quick dry. Um, I do love that for straight scrapbooking but um, it doesn't work that well with mixed media because it's a thinner glue and so the amount that you would need if you were going to ad adhere something over top of texture paste, you probably need a lot more glue, need to hold it down a lot longer, and um, it might soak your page. So that's why I'm sticking with the um, quick dry, the Helmar, the clear glue, because it's a lot tackier and it's more of a dry glue, if that makes sense. Uh, so now I'm putting down some of the cute little um, embellishments that I found on the page, on the sticker sheet there. And um, I'm putting down some little whimsical ones, like the little bees, because, you know, that little bird is really cute, but he kind of was standing out on his own. So I'm putting down some of the other little um, cute stickers um, just to add some extra whimsy to the page. And I've put down another one of those circle frames. Um, I was thinking about putting down a third one, but I'm not going to. I don't want to clutter up the page too much. I do want more of the texture paste to show through. And now um, what I'm going for is uh, some black ink and a uh, black ink or a black spray. And uh, on the scrap lifted page or on the, the page that we're scrap lifting, she used a lot of black ink. And I used to finish off a lot of my layouts that way, especially art journal sort of feeling ones. To me, the pages um, weren't complete without a little bit of that spray and splatter. So I couldn't find my Diane Reevely, but I did find the SEI Tumble Dry. And that is a type of a fabric spray that you can find in your big um, hobby stores. You won't find them in the mixed media section or the scrapbooking section. You will find them where the t-shirts and the tie-dye section is uh, because they are used for spraying on fabric. The great thing about them this one here is a really great intense black. I love it for that. Um, you'll see that I'm tapping quite a bit of it out. I use two different methods to do that depending on how big of a splat I want. Um, the great thing about the tumble, um, tumble dye, I think it's called, by SEI, is that once it's dry, it's permanent. It doesn't react again. So if you're doing art journaling or scrapbooking with mixed media, and you've put the splatters down and you want to add some more watercolor, you don't have to worry about it reacting again with the watercolor. Um, 
it is a really great um, dye. I've used it quite a bit. I have them in just about every color they come in. Um, they come in some really cool neon colors too, like a neon green and a neon pink. Um, so, and they're pretty opaque, which is really nice. And then what I'm going to do is just use um, some of the paper towels. I did cover up some of the embellishments where I didn't want too many large splats, but I'm going to use some of the paper towel to just create some additional texture. It's going to blot up some of the bigger ink splats, but it's also going to give a different kind of feeling to the splats. Um, so you'll see that in the close-ups as well. So as I said, make sure that you visit Rebecca's layout so that you can see her take and how she used mixed media. Um, I'm going to just turn off the light and show you under the camera here some close-ups, but then I actually have still shots at the end of this video. So, um, so yeah, here I go. There you go. So you can see more of it now. So you can see the dusting effect, how it gave more color to some of the texture paste, but it didn't bleed through onto the paper or didn't go underneath the paper. It just stayed on top. So that's a way to get some sort of uh, two-tone effect from your mixed media. So I really appreciate you being here. Again, thanks for supporting me by subscribing and clicking the notification bell. And I hope that you'll stay tuned for more of my videos that I have coming up this week. Again, visit Rebecca's link um, that's down in the description box and make sure that you're staying safe, having a fun summer so far, and we'll see you soon in our next video. Bye for now.